I want a farm program that'll maintain farm income. I want a farm program that'll give us some protection, but I would like to see the prices determined in the free market. WOI-TV, in cooperation with the Agricultural Extension Service, presents Down to Earth. We continue with another public service by discussing the present farm issues tonight on Down to Earth with Dave Bateman. Well, good evening. We certainly are glad to have you again tonight to help us start off our second on the series of programs on public affairs. Now, tonight, we're discussing goals for a farm price program. Last week, we discussed Shall we change the present farm program tonight? Goals for a farm program, price program. And next week, we're going to discuss methods of price and income support. And on January the 28th, farm price supports the issues and the choices. Now that is a part of the general area of farm price and income policy. Now we know that these topics are timely and important, and we certainly hope that we can make them interesting for you. Now, everyone has been discussing the farm programs lately. It's been in the newspaper, it's been on the radio, it's been on television, and you've heard ample opportunity to hear and read about it. Now, a lot of that was brought about because President Eisenhower focused the attention of the uh, people on it when he sent his message to Congress, when he asked uh, that some changes be made. In other words, he has recommended that some changes be made in the farm program. That's enough to cause quite a bit of discussion. Now, there's one thing I hope that you will remember throughout this entire series, and that's just how important you are as an individual in this whole scheme of things, in the nation's agriculture, in the nation's business. And, of course, in order to be, to be important or to make the maximum contribution, let us say, you have to be well informed. And that's what we hope to be able to do on this program, is to give you information on which you can base some of the facts that you will have to uh, determine later on, you know, this year, next year, and in the years to come. Now, in our audience tonight, we have several individuals that I want you to meet. Sitting here with me is Mr. Carl Malone. Mr. Carl Malone is the extension economist. Now, he's an authority on the facts to be discussed tonight, and you'll be hearing from him from time to time throughout the show. And then we're delighted to have had with us again tonight two gentlemen that were with us last week, Mr. Don Fish of Maynard, who's a livestock farmer, and Mr. Uh, Oscar Helene, who is a farmer from Marcus. Now then, in addition to that, our studio audience tonight is made up of a group of, of uh, farm folks from Hamilton and Boone counties, and certainly they will have some questions to ask Mr. Fish and Mr. Helene later on. Our moderator for this series of shows, all of them, is Mr. Wallace Ogg, Extension Economist here at Iowa State College. Wallace? Thank you, Dave. Before we discuss uh, farm policy goals, I want to uh, talk to you about an idea that uh, is important in a democracy if people are to make the kind of decisions that you've been talking about. Now, we've tried to draw a picture of this idea. We have a chart over here of uh, uh, methods and goals. Now, uh, if you think about a, a goal that you want to attain, Usually there has to be some kind of method, and the goal is quite often an intermediate goal to some higher level goal that uh, is superior to that. Now we feel that uh, people will agree often about the, the highest level goals, but uh, sometimes disagree about the methods and the uh, intermediate goals. Now let's illustrate. If you take uh, methods, for instance, the uh, uh, Corn loan is an illustration of a kind of method, and this is a method to an intermediate goal, uh, supporting corn prices. But supporting corn prices really isn't a goal in itself. It's just a, uh, another kind of method to a higher level goal, in this case, uh, uh, fair income between corn farmers and the rest of the uh, people. Now, uh, at each of these levels, people may disagree. They can disagree over the methods, they can disagree over uh, the intermediate goals, 
Uh, they can even disagree over the higher goals. But usually people are more inclined to agree over, for instance, uh, the idea of a fair income or parity for agriculture than they are to uh, agree over the, the uh, intermediate goal supporting prices. Because you can always do these things by some other uh, means. Now, uh, if we uh, do tend to agree at the higher levels, then that ought to be true of our panel tonight, and I predict that our men will uh, tend to agree about some of the uh, uh, more ultimate goals, you might call them, but will disagree over uh, how we get there. Now, before uh, we uh, get to this business of a discussion of farm policy goals uh, in itself, I'd like to ask you gentlemen uh, about uh, some other kinds of goals. For instance, uh, uh, we have this question of national security, which people in the United States are very much concerned about. Now, the tension is relaxed a little bit, but uh, would you agree that uh, our farm program should at least not interfere with national security? How about it, Don? Sure. How about you, Oscar? Right. Well, now, uh, uh, <coughs> as you think about this business of adjusting to an uneasy peace, uh, a lot of people are discussing the possibility that we might be uh, on the brink of a depression. Now, would you also agree that farm policy ought to help us avoid a depression? That's right. How about it, Don? You bet. Now, any questions that either one of you have about any of these goals we go along, I don't hesitate to interrupt. Now, um, would you also agree that uh, uh, we're interested in progress, economic progress, and economic efficiency in our society. Sure. Well, that's been one of the main attributes of our people in this country, is their ability to go forward with efficient production of all kinds. Um, all right, now, uh, uh, one that's just a little more difficult, this business of, uh, of fair income. Uh, I wonder if we can agree on a definition of uh, of a fair income opportunity for farm families. I, uh, I uh, have a definition here that's kind of an economist's definition, but I'd like to, to uh, give it to you fellows and see if you are willing to go along with it. Farm families, uh, to have a fair income opportunity, uh, have a fair income opportunity, when they have the opportunity to earn a living that is equal to uh, uh, in, in, either in agriculture or in other employment is equal to the uh, income that people in other employment may earn with the same effort and ability. Now, that's a little complicated, but uh, uh, any question about it before we... Uh, I agree that I, th I think it's an accepted uh, policy in this country, and uh, I think we ought to try to maintain it. Uh, how about you, Don? Uh, is this uh, definition of fair income all right with you? Uh, pretty much so. Uh, do you have any qualifications you want to make? You sound a little hesitant. Well, there's always a possibility if uh, if you can't make a, a living that you think you ought to be making in agriculture that you can move out of agriculture. Well, we, we said that, you see. We said that you have the opportunity to earn either in agriculture or in other employment the same level of living that uh, 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 other families could earn uh, with similar effort and ability. All right, now then, uh, I'd like to ask you gentlemen if you think that uh, farm families have this kind of opportunity, uh, when we have the kind of inflation that we had during World War II or during the Korean War, how about it? Uh, Oscar, you... Uh, I'm pretty sure we did. Uh, the fact is, on uh, rising markets, generally, uh, agriculture nearly always uh, uh, comes in as uh, quickly as any other segment of society, so I'm sure that agriculture fared fairly well during the inflationary period. And some farmers, of course, might have done a little better than this, others not quite so well, but, well, how about you, Don? Well, for one of the few times tonight, I'll agree with Oscar. <laughs> but, uh, well, you've been doing pretty well in agreeing so far. About the change. Now, uh, uh, I want to uh, ask you if you think that uh, farmers have this kind of opportunity when there's a depression going on. How about you, Don? Maybe not quite so much so. You mean that, that there really might be some case for, for uh, some kind of aid to agriculture during depression? That's right. All right, how about you? 
Yes, uh, I think it's always been uh, true that uh, as we had a little advantage on the way going up, we're certainly having the disadvantage going down. So uh, both of you would agree that something ought to be done for agriculture when we have a depression. Now, uh, the question where I think you will part company. Uh, do we have this kind of, of opportunity for farm families at a time like the present when uh, we have full employment and we don't have any inflation, we haven't uh, a depression yet anyway, and we don't have a war. Now, under these circumstances, uh, uh, Oscar, would you say that uh, farmers have this kind of opportunity? Uh, well, uh, it's pretty difficult to maintain um, satisfactory income when you have a plant which is uh, overbuilt. And uh, that's about what's happening in agriculture today, that it's a little bigger because of the war demands and world demands than is necessary in this particular time of our uh, economy. And so you're saying that with the full employment that we have now, at least, farmers don't have this opportunity? It's not very good. Well, how about you, Don? Well, I would say that under the conditions that we have at the present time, that uh, we shouldn't make an effort to set uh, government so support prices high enough that they will make the market. I think now, under the conditions that we have, prices for farm products should be set largely on a free market, that the goal of support prices, flexible supports like I believe in, would be to provide some sort of security on the lower level, but still enough room that in times like this, our farm prices are set in the free market. Well, uh, just why uh, <coughs> you uh, want to have agriculture take the uh, brunt of the thing? Are you going to recommend that uh, labor and industry does similarly? Uh, there was a question that you brought up last time, Oscar, that I wanted to challenge just a little bit. Uh, you intimated that practically all of labor and all of industry were, were subsidized. I think that's not true. Uh, certainly labor ha have got themselves some better things and some higher wages, but there's uh, nobody guarantees labor a job, regardless what the wages are. There are certain sections of industry that are subsidized, notably the aircraft industry, probably the oil industry to a little uh, extent, the mail business, but there are also large parts of our industry, some of the most successful parts, like the automobile industry and the appliances industry, which aren't subsidized and which operate in a free market. Yes, but what they actually do uh, in a situation of that kind when they uh, um, uh, produce more than the market can uh, absorb, they don't uh, uh, have a flexible price to get rid of their product. They use the better method, uh, business method, of uh, uh, curtailing their production to tailor the demand. And a notable uh, example, I think, is what happened recently in the Studebaker Corporation where they laid off a rather large number of people. Uh, they didn't cut the prices of their product. And it seems to me that uh, agriculture has grown up, so to speak, at the present time, wherein it is just as important a business as any other area in our society, and that uh, <clears throat> uh, it seems to me that uh, we ought to take a leaf out of the experience of other business, and that when we find that our plant is too big and that we're producing more than we can uh, get consumed at a parity price, then we ought to cut down our plant. Now, Oscar, uh, uh, there are two things that I'd like to say. First thing, just a kind of a minor aside, and that is while industry uh, doesn't change their price every day. They still do change their prices. For instance, I've been informed that in the Des Moines area just before Christmas, Westinghouse cut the price on television sets, $50 set. And within a period of two weeks, they were 300 orders behind, something like that. Businesses do adjust their prices to maximize their profits. The other thing that I'm going to say, and I think this is a, a very important one, and farmers should never underestimate it, and that is that we assume if we are going to uh, uh, control prices, so to speak, that we're also going to control production, and we're going to control it very rigidly. Uh, your businessman that you were just talking about does that. He, uh, he makes his plant become idle. He lays off workers. Uh, I'm just wondering how well you can do that in agriculture, and I would just like to uh, ask you this question. For instance, this fall, uh, our, under the wheat program, producers are having a rather serious cut. 
somewhere in the neighborhood of 25 or 30 percent. But I've been informed that if the wheat farmers were really facing up to the issue and wanting to do something about the huge surplus they have, they would have to cut production 45 or 50 percent. How do you think, Oscar, that farmers in your area uh, would like it if their corn production all of a sudden was cut 50 percent? Do you think that could be managed? Well, let, let, me, let me see if I can uh, get this problem a little more directly into focus. Uh, we have in industry and in agriculture expanded our plant to take care of the war needs and the extra demands that came on us after the war and including the Korean War. We expanded agriculture uh, to a large degree because we had this demand coming up. We were fortunate we could expand it. We did expand it. And now that the demand isn't quite there, we have somewhat too large a plant. Now, we did the same thing in many of the other industries in industry because we had to have the tools of war and we wanted as much of the peacetime kind of production for ourselves as we could get at the same time. Now, it seems to me that that is the setting in which we operate. And the question is, where do you go from there for agriculture when you've got this plant a little over expanded? Now, uh, if I may pick up at this point, uh, uh, Carl, uh, it seems to me that, that Oscar has been saying that with the plant somewhat overexpanded, uh, by the way, would you agree that the plant is somewhat overexpanded, Don? And that we do have a problem of uh, declining prices probably still ahead of us if we flex down with your procedure. Would you agree to that? That's right. That is that this is on the right. So we are agreed that this is going to be painful some way. That's right. Now, as I understand it from you, Oscar, you're saying that uh, uh, you uh, want to maintain the price level and take up the slack by uh, whatever is necessary in the way of rigid production control. Is that right? That's right. And I'd just like to ask Don if he thinks that by reducing the price level from 90% to 75%, that we will actually reduce production. Come on. Of course, I, I would like to answer ask Oscar by asking him another question. If you uh, uh, cut a, uh, corn acreage 20%, do you think you can cut corn production 20%? No, but I think you will cut it materially. Uh, there will be some increase in the total number of acres which we plant because of our technological um, know-how. But actually, when we take our acres out of production, we, uh, I would recommend that we take them completely out of production. In other words, you can't substitute with other uh, grain or feed crops. and. Uh, but with that method, we can, I think, really reduce production. Now, you're, you're really asking for a kind of production control, however, Oscar, that we never yet have, have actually had. Is that right? That's right. And, uh, however, now, we've got some experience in the tobacco thing, which does indicate that people will do it. Well, it isn't tobacco. I would uh, think we might uh, go that far. But I'm not sure that we, we uh, have really known what it was like in corn and no. wheat and Wallace, cows. I agree. Wallace, I think you're kind of... Stealing my thunder. Well, now, wait a minute. I want, to, I want to press you now, and I just want to get Oscar off the uh, uh, hook here. Now, um, if you, uh, if you uh, have uh, your kind of program with flexible prices, Don, uh, and you are agreeing to let prices go down to the market level, and you're going to take the adjustment, not by uh, submitting to control, but by submitting to a lower income. Is that right? Uh, possibly some lower income. In, in other words, Wallace, I'm making this point. I may be a crusader or something like that, but I think it's important enough to keep free enterprise in agriculture to sacrifice some small amount of income. I think, uh, I, I feel that we wouldn't be sacrificing too much. That's my opinion. Others might think we'd sacrifice more. But I, uh, I, I feel that uh, the kind of agriculture that we have today wasn't made by the kind of practices that you're going to guarantee you a, 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 a parity income. I think as a farmer, in the long run, I want to produce the things and the amount of things that the market will take. And if the market won't take it, maybe we'd better be shifting a little bit. And that's another thing I don't like about these high uh, price supports based on a past parity. They tend to to stabilize agriculture the way it was 20 years ago. Now, you, you didn't answer uh, Oscar's question, though, about whether you thought that, that reducing prices down to, say, 75% of parity 
would uh, bring about some adjustment in acreage? I don't know the exact uh, point, but I, I would say this, that you can't overlook the fact that price is not only a factor in determining income, but price is also a guide to the amount of the goods that the consumer will buy, and it's also a guide to production. And uh, uh, I don't think they probably would adjust down. I think we would consume a lot more of the product, well, now, now which like would have the same effect. I'd like to get in on that one, on the consumption thing. After all, uh, uh, how, how many uh, uh, people in this hung country are hungry? I can't help but think that there are about 30 million people in this country that are already on a diet. My doctor and my wife look at me and they say that, we ought to, uh, that I ought to uh, watch my diet, and so I put it in front of me where I can see it. Now, there are 30 million other people who are doing that in this country, and I don't believe it's possible for you to increase production very much. There's a certain class that probably is, but I've been listening all week to people who say, well, now, by selling campaigns and doing the right thing uh, with this particular product, we can get more eggs consumed, we can get more bacon consumed, more turkey consumed, more of everything consumed. When you consume it in one product, you'd simply take it away from another. Actually, in wheat, for instance, uh, we are not producing or consuming any more wheat today than we did 25 years ago. Uh, the per capita consumption is going down because we've been taught to eat other things which we like better. And so you can get certain things consumed, but you can't get everything consumed because we're eating pretty well and our, and our foreign market's gone. So I think all you can do is to uh, uh, narrow the production area of this country so that you fit the plant to the demand. Well, now, you haven't, Oscar, however, indicated how you would actually achieve the, the adjustment if we are producing a little too much as you say we are. And I don't think Don has indicated this either. Now, uh, you, you, uh, how are we going to get adjustment from too much plant? Don, uh, uh, Do, how, how would, are prices would, going to encourage it? Would you like to make it for a specific commodity? Well, I, I'm thinking about agriculture in total. That is, uh, uh, if we have a problem of, of overproduction in agriculture in total as a result of the stimulation from war, uh, how are we going to uh, make the adjustment with prices if we grant that we people eat a little more, even though Oscar doesn't think they'll eat very much more? Well, now, you will agree with me that since the war is over, we have a whole new set of, of demands set, set up for farm commodities. They weren't the same as during the war. For instance, the demand for wheat, the effective demand, is much lower. Uh, I think there will be a, an adjust, natural adjustment of acreages between commodities, uh, an adjustment of resources uh, among livestock. I think we'll get it. I'll admit, as I did a while ago, we may go down to a little bit lower income, but we will get our uh, product consumed. What I've been trying to get said was that uh, you really are asking, however, that some people uh, get out of agriculture. That's uh, right. Uh, fundamentally, I think one of the biggest problems we have is an overpopulation in agriculture, and I'm sure that if all of the people in agriculture were producing uh, at a, a net loss, uh, if, they, if they got out, that the rest of us would be very much better off. Well, now, we have uh, uh, been talking these things over here, but we've got a, a studio audience here who are going to be uh, thinking through and trying to make some decisions on the things that we've been talking about, and so I think we ought, before we ask them to make a decision, to, uh, if they have any questions they would like to ask of either of you gentlemen. How about you folks over here uh, in the studio audience? Would you like to raise some questions with either one of these people? Any of you have questions? I am Herbert Fick, a businessman in Ames, farm manager with the Doan Agricultural Service. Mr. Fish, do you think that under your sliding scale uh, goals that the farmer can maintain a good net income? I think that I think that in the in the long run that he'll make the the kind of net income that his uh, that his operations earn. Well, that that's the sum total of of, of all agriculture earns. Uh, what you're saying is that uh, if you take less than parity prices, uh, you will still earn all you're entitled to. Uh, that's right. Uh, parity price is a thing that I don't like. It's always based on a past concept. Uh, parity price, as far as I'm concerned, the only correct parity price is the one that you can't figure, but the one that's in a effect today. And very often that's different than in the past. And the parity income that we're setting up that's based on 15 years ago or 
uh, sliding scale average or all that sort of thing is not an accurate parity price, especially between products. And I would like to just mention the fact that citrus fruit producers are producing citrus fruit at a good profit, at selling it somewhere around 32% of parity. But we're not supporting citrus fruit no. prices. We're supporting basics. Now, how about uh, some of you folks over here? Do you have any other questions that you would like to ask me, one of these people? I'm uh, John Safley, farmer from Boone County, and I'd like to ask uh, Mr. Fish if uh, he thought it was possible for us to eat our way through this surplus. Uh, actually, I don't think you could eat your way out of the uh, cotton surplus or probably the wheat su surplus. I think there's a very good possibility if the prices were low enough that would, we would eat ourselves out of the surplus of, uh, of food products. Of course, what actually happens when you eat yourself out of the product, if you don't have the demand, what actually happens if it gets cheap enough, there will be people who will uh, waste some of it and uh, they will do other things with it than uh, saving it for um, uh, food purposes. To that extent, you will probably eliminate part of the surplus. I think we have time for one more question. You have one. Anybody have another question? I'm Bernard Judge. I'm a farmer from Boone County. And I would like to ask Mr. Fish if he doesn't think that we will have to have just as rigid control, say, in the cornfield at 75% of the parity as we do at 90% of parity kind of working on you, Don. <laughs> That's all right. Uh, uh, actually, uh, when you say 75% and 90% of parity, I, I think you would have to uh, maybe not have such rigid controls because you wouldn't have to, you wouldn't be trying to cut your production quite, quite so far. It seems to me that if you cut your production as far as we might, uh, and I think we haven't faced up to this enough, uh, if we're going to keep prices at 90% of parity, we're going to have to cut production in some of these things so much that it's going to take much more serious regimentation than any of us have ever envisioned and uh, of the kind that I personally don't like. Now, may I uh, just say one thing here before we uh, turn it back to Dave? As I understand it, uh, Oscar is, is asking for uh, uh, rigid controls and maintain our present prices by uh, government uh, programs. Don is asking for uh, uh, getting rid of the controls and letting prices flex down to their normal level. Now, uh, I believe that's where we're leaving it. Dave? Well, Wallace, I think that the questions have definitely been debated. We're delighted to have had all of you folks with us from uh, the rural areas here. And obviously, we're always glad to have you folks with us. Now, there are two things you can do. Maybe you have some questions you would like to ask Mr. Helene or Mr. Fish. Why don't you write me here at WOI TV, and we'll see that they get those questions and answer them for you, either on the air or by personal letter. Now, if you haven't received or haven't gotten your copy of What's Next in Farm Programs, be sure and go to your county extension office, either to your county extension director or your county extension home economist, and ask them for a copy of this new uh, leaflet which is available to you. Well, it's always nice having you with us, and we'll see you again next Thursday. Good night. WOI TV, in cooperation with the Agricultural Extension Service, has presented Farm Facts with Dave Bateman. Technical Director, Vernon Casper. His program directed by Joe Adams. Be with us again next Thursday for Down to Earth.